I mean, if you dig deep enough, you can even see that they list the dangers uh, on the the CDC's website, the FDA, uh, the pharmaceutical the manufacturers inserts, of the vaccines, they lie to the, the public, inserts. But then I mean, they lie right to the public and, and say safe and effective. Yeah, it's right there in plain sight. You just have to stop and say, wait a second, why am I going to? I mean, that's the main situation that we're dealing with now with food, beverages, water, exposure to any of these things is people don't just say, wait, let me see what's in this beverage before I drink it. Let me see what's in this food before I eat it. Let me research what's in this vaccine or flu shot before I stick it in my body. That's right. All right. I want to go through these calls. Mike in Arizona, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm just thinking of an idea for a product that would help maybe come off oxycontins or pain medicine. Uh, I know a lot of people that struggle with it, I myself, and uh, I've been trying for a really long time, and I know everything that I've read says to ease off of it. But by the time you ease off of it and you the medicine starts to work again and then you just take more, uh, I, I don't know if Dr. Group could suggest a regiment to come off of them. Boy, this is a big question, the age-old thing of how to get off opiates. Uh, whoever figures that out is going to you know, win the Nobel Prize. Well, actually, you get the Nobel Prize for committing evil now, so I guess you wouldn't. You'd probably get assassinated. Uh, but I know there are things you can do with supplements. There are herbs and things I know that, the, that they've proven can help block some of the addiction and that even Big Pharma is trying to patent some of that now. Uh, Dr. Group, what would you do to get off, uh, say, a hillbilly heroin, uh, uh, Oxycontin? Well, we've actually had a lot of good success with that, and it all stems back to cleansing the body, starting with intestinal cleansing with oxy powder and then moving on to liver and gallbladder cleansing because you have to remember those pain medications will cause you to become constipated. And once you yeah, clean a lot of opiates do that because I've never really taken them except when I had a broken leg or whatever. But I always hear about heroin heads and people like don't go to the bathroom but every two weeks. Well, because it alters the neurological contractions or the normal contractions of the muscles that surround the intestinal lining, it kind of numbs the nerves. That's why they're pain medications because they numb the nerves so you can't feel the pain. Well, you have tiny thousands and millions and millions of these little nerve endings all the way down through your intestinal lining. So at, because you're taking an opiate, because you're taking medications, most likely the majority of people that are taking pain medications or any medications are not eating healthy. These things numb the uh, nerves. They leak through the intestinal lining through leaky gut syndrome. And then you become constipated because you're not able to create that normal peristaltic movement in the bowel. What and a nightmare drug. Yes, but you can uh, eventually get off of those. One of the things, vitamin D, uh, like the winter sun, it's amazing what that does for healing joint. And I don't know why you're in pain to begin with, but uh, some of the newest research that's come out on 20,000 IUs of vitamin D, there was a doctor or a research scientist that wrote a book called The Miraculous Healing Benefits of D3 actually found that high doses of D3 can help heal all of those injuries. Well, sure, for that, folks that don't know, because I did my own research, isn't D3 a, mass, a master base hormone? I mean, it's basically a hormone, and that you have to have it to produce and manufacture your hormones, and that's the same thing for basically uh, B12, right? Yes. Actually, D3 is a hormone, and I, I really didn't think it was that necessary. I figured we were getting enough in the sun. But as our research continued, I realized that uh, there was also a conspiracy or an attack on blocking the UVB rays with all the chemtrails, and that pretty much we're all deficient or not getting enough D in the body as well. But that led me to looking at you know, there's thousands upon thousands of studies on the effects of D, and I, that's another thing I think everybody is deficient in and everybody needs. So I would highly recommend, if anyone's on prescription medications, whether it's pain medications or whatever, there are solutions. And one thing with opiates is you have to get off of gluten when you're uh, slowly through time, it's called time contingent detoxification. You don't want to cold turkey it. You want to slowly start reducing it, reducing it, reducing it over a period of wow, time. Wow, this is really important. I want to have you on for a whole show about gluten because even in mainline literature, they admit now that it mimics opiates 
that's a whole other subject. How is grain mimicking poppy seeds? It's just the way they're just finding new things about it all the time. I mean, I, I can't remember the chemical name of it, but yeah, I was just not too long ago reading some information that gluten actually does have an opiate like compound in it. And think of, and that's what makes bread so addictive. That's why that's it makes why, you so calm and feel so good when you eat a big, you exactly, know, loaf of bread at the steakhouse. Exactly, exactly. And it also, you also go through withdrawals when you get off of it. They, it makes you crave it again. So you get more and more of it. So that's something that needs to be... It, amazing. We've got to go in a few minutes because our, our next guest is coming up. Dr. Rupp, I appreciate all your time. Let's move quickly now to Felicia uh, in Oregon. And again, they've got the call thing way back, so I can barely read. I'm not complaining. It's just, that's why I'm butchering the names. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air. Hi. About a year ago, um, after starting uh, uh, the X2, I developed sy symptoms that almost uh, started, you know, resulted in surgery. But in it ended up I had Hashimoto's, and I was told that the iodine is what made that condition flare, the, you know, the autoimmune response to start. And I wanted to know what your opinion was and if I could resume taking iodine, and if not, how can I keep that part of my system straight? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know, you know too much about your history and everything, but I have not heard, and, and I also refer to uh, Dr. Brownstein's research on Hashimoto's hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, and I haven't had a case, I don't think Dr. Brownstein has either, of iodine, a good source of iodine ever causing a thyroid condition that would require any type of surgery or anything like that. So I don't know how much you were taking. Uh, as a matter of fact, just the opposite. We've seen uh, people, what happens, you might, it really takes about six months is what we've seen to regulate out the thyroid because what happens is the bromine starts releasing and the, the other halogens which can alter different types of thyroid I was about to say if it, if it makes your body push out all the toxins that have built up and we know that the, 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 it hits women harder then that could have been the response kind of like cleaning a filter out I mean if you ever right. clean a filter in your fish tank you do it right. wrong it dumps all the crap into the fish tank and, and uh, so I mean that's why I've said that people should consult their physician before using this stuff because you got all these bad halogens in there and you're now going to be messing with that you know who knows what happens is when you start taking it, you might have hypothyroid, you might have hyper, you might have Hashimoto's for a period of time, and that's just your thyroid getting rid of anything. The problem is that the doctors, when they do thyroid panels or when they do, most doctors never test for iodine anyway, but even the ones that do, they don't test for bromine. So you get false positive results. And so in order to rebalance the thyroid... Exactly. You, you they don't test for the bad halogens. They'll blame iodine because you've got so much yes. of the other stuff in you. I read about that. So probably because, again, that's, you, me, that's medical doctors that are always... And, of course, Brownstein is a medical doctor, but uh, who just don't understand it. So probably at that one point in time, you went in to have your thyroid checked or something. I don't know what happened. And Hashimoto's is nothing more than a roller coaster of your thyroid going up and down, which is completely normal in, in a lot of times with people starting on iodine. So they they might have, you know, misdiagnosed you or, or might have said, you know... Ma'am, I appreciate your call. Material. We're out of time, but that's a really important question because I'll be in restaurants, I'll be at church, I'll be just everywhere for years, and I see women talking about their thyroids, young, old. I see women everywhere where, where, who aren't fat but have the swollen goiter like we had uh, in the 20s and 30s when we didn't have iodine and the salt. Uh, and of course, they've taken it out again. Why is it hitting women? And of course, they admit that in the news, that women are more heavily hit uh, than others by thyroid problems. Why is there an epidemic of that? Well, women have uh, a larger thyroid gland anyway, and uh, iodine, re iodine really likes to deposit itself in the reproductive areas. And women have breasts, which are you know a lot more surface area than guys, and so iodine likes to accumulate in there. Women have their menstrual cycles, which are changes in their hormonal patterns, and if they don't have enough iodine, they can have you know uh, harder symptoms of PMS, endometriosis. Any of the reproduct women just have a tendency to have more reproductive problems than men. They have ovaries, they have eggs, they have a whole cycle that goes on all the time. So 
it real iodine deficiency really affects women a lot more than it does men. Well, again, everybody's body is different. Is it possible? Because people can be uh, allergic to, you know, cabbage. They can be allergic to anything. Is it possible that, that's why I always say check with a physician, that some people could be allergic uh, to pure iodine? Because, I mean, I know you'll die without it, but... So, so I don't think if you have a receptor on every single cell in your body for a substance that you could ever be allergic to it. What happens is sometimes the bowel is in such bad shape that they might be taken with something else or something else might be inside the bowel at the time that might cause a reaction or inflammation. But as far as looking at a monotomic or looking at a detoxified type of iodine and knowing that you have every single cell in your body has an iodine receptor, to me, it would be absolutely impossible the way that God designed it for you to be have an allergy to iodine in its detoxified form. All right, we've got to have you back up sooner to just take a full hour of calls because we've got Jim wants to talk about fibromyalgia that's exploding. David was, wants to talk about his medications. Tim wants to talk about heart problems. Sean was, is a pharmacist. Uh, I want to talk to a doctor group on a health issue. Joey wants to talk about winter sun, vitamin D question. But I'm going to, even though we got our next guest, I'm pushed him back. I apologize. We'll go to Sean and, and then to have a final question because Sean's a pharmacist. I want to hear what Sean has to say from Canada. Sean, you're on the air with Dr. Group. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a first time caller and uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity to finally talk with you, Alex. Um, I've actually had experience working both in Canada and the U.S. And I uh, just wanted to ask Dr. Group about his opinion on healthcare in Canada versus the U.S. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it in Canada, but here in the U.S., I've worked here in the U.S., and the prices are just astronomical. Um, it's not really a free market, um, and I wanted to know what you thought about that, because we're talking about drugs that are 30 or 40 years old that are marked up 50 to like a thousand percent. Sure, I thought the available. U.S. was the worst about gouging for drugs. You're saying Canada's worst? No, actually, no, no, I'm not, sir. What I'm saying is that it's like a drug such as, maybe Dr. Group can comment on this, but I mean a drug such as Declofenac, which is uh, basically a topical anti-inflammatory. I could go to Canada to one of my buddy's pharmacies and buy it for about a hundred bucks. But when I was working here in the U.S., dispensing it in the drive through to a patient on workers' compensation, I mean, the drug was more than $1,400. No, that's a whole it's other absolutely. issue. Absolutely. That's a whole other issue. Why does the U.S. have the highest drug cost in the world, Dr. Group? That's a good way to end it. Thank you, Sean. Well, in short, that we don't technically have a health care system here, or we don't have a health care system in Canada or anywhere where there's pharmaceuticals. We have a death or a disease management care system. And until they realize that we need to address the root cause of disease and the root cause of mental illness, it's going to stay that way. It's, the reason why the drugs are so expensive is because it's all a money game. It's all about how much money they can make. And the insurance companies are tied in with the pharmaceutical companies. And not only that, they're tied in with the big organizations like Susan B. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation, American Cancer Society, and all the 501c corporations that people donate money to. So they take money from you every single way they can and make you feel bad and make you think that sure. they're going to come up with a cure, but they never will. All right, Dr. Group, globalhealingcenter.com. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you.